Today's show is Find Your God-Given Mission, but there is so much more to Marshall Belcher than that. If you start hearing him, the miracles, the joy, the prophetic words, and everything else that God has done in his life, and he even spoke over me once and brought me into that whole fire realm, right? It is like, Wow, wow, wow. And oh my goodness, I don't even usually talk like this, but I am now. I just tell you, when you get more of God and you get more of the fire of the Holy Spirit, you can't help it. But there is joy, there's transformation, and you will step into that incredible mission that God called you in today. So with that said, Marshall, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. So how did all this start for you? I, I look at you and I'm like, wow, how does he do it, right? Mm. And I know it's the Lord. It is, of course, Absolutely. the Lord. But how did it all start for you? How did you start started to get excited about Jesus? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a long journey. It's a long story. Uh, I grew up in a Christian home, mm -hmm. attended church every week, youth group, all of those kinds of things, right? And while when I would go into the church, I would, I would feel like God's here, I really never met God. I never experience uh, God. And so I just kind of went through the motions for almost three decades. So you knew all the Christianese. Totally. Sounds familiar. And became a bored Christian. Oh, I was very bored. Sounds familiar. All right. So there is a point that God's going to do something because he sees you bored and not going anywhere. And you know, everything that's being preached about, talked about, you know, the Christ Christianese slang language, all very of the well. nine yards. So how did God get a hold of you? Yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? Because here I was just cruising in my life. I'd gotten married. Uh -huh. My wife and I had been married for several years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we finally decided to have kids. And by that time, we were very set in our careers and just our life path. And God crashed in. And he crashed in when my first son was born. Explain that to me. Yeah, so it was really interesting. So Because usually uh, what happens now, you're committed to routine, regular stuff, steady job, all right. that. Yeah, so, so God really used the birth of my first son, Marshall, to really wake me up. And when I'll never forget when I was holding him for the first time and, you know, I looked at him. I, I literally felt the presence of God and I just felt this drawing of God. It's, it, it's time to pursue me again is what I felt. And so I knew as soon as we left that hospital, I was, I was going to go find, okay, where, where can we start going to church again? And it was interesting. God planted a, uh, a picture of a person in my mind, a person that I had known from high school, so that I had known 15 years prior and I hadn't talked to recently. And I think the reason why he did that was uh, this person was really well known for always going to the church where things were happening, you know, where, ah. where God was moving, where... And you he was know, known for that. And, and, and they were known, he and his wife, that would be where they would be, you know, going to church. So I said, well, I'm going to reach out to them. And I happened to reach out to them. And they said, oh, you wouldn't believe the timing. We're at this new church plant. And, the, you know, the Holy Spirit's really moving and God's really moving. Did you know what that meant? I had no idea what that meant. You I just, think you do. I thought I did. You think, because I know. You, totally. You really think, oh, I know. You think you have it so together, right? Totally. And, and I thought, great, this is what I want. Little did I know what would be, you know, transpiring over the next few months and the next year, um, which literally changed my life. So I, I, go, I go to the church, and they're in a very small, you know, sanctuary that maybe only seated 30 people or something. It was oh, a that is chapel. small. It was a chapel, yeah. you know, that had been planted there decades before. And at the end, the pastor, you know, has everyone come up to pray for them. And I'm thinking, okay, sure. You know, I want more of God, not knowing what that really meant. And then the next thing I know, I'm kind of waking up on the ground. I'm like, how did I get here? And you got slain in the spirit? I got slain in the spirit. Had no idea what it was. No, no, no I know, because you came out of that kind of it was conservative. conservative environment. Yes. And so I thought to myself, this is great. This must be God. So I'm coming back. And, and over the course of the, the following weeks, you know, I began to just become hungrier and hungrier and hungrier for God. But at the same time, my, my history was colliding in the sense that as, as I started to pick up the word again and really get into it, I would read about all these supernatural occurrences and, and all these experiences of people meeting God face to face. 
and miracles and signs and different things happening. And I thought to myself, well, what's, what's happening? Why, why don't I see this now? Why have I never seen it in 30 years? Is God really dead? What? Wait, what? wait, wait. you've got it backwards, man. <laughs> because I would have expected is God really dead before you started seeing the changes. And I believe that was God stirring me up because it only took a couple of months and I finally had it out with God in a sense. And I'm, I'm glad he's so merciful and gracious, but I literally said, God, I patted my Bible. I said, God, I, either all of this is real or it's fake. It's a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. And I've got no interest in being part of a fairy tale. Um, I've been a fool or this is real. And if it's real, I want to see it and I want to see it now. Oh boy. Oh, you know, if God, if you challenge God with his word, he will challenge you right back and yes. give it to you. Because what I, what, now let me guess, let me guess. So what happens next, <laughs> and I'm just guessing at this, I truly don't know. And, and you need to know, I don't know this answer right now, but he's going to use you for what you're asking from him. Is that what happened? That's definitely what happened. I told you I knew. Well, I didn't, but so... How did that go? So, what, what happened? so my hunger began to build. I began to, you know, watch anything I could online to see where is this happening today or is it happening? And so then I, you know, I find people like Todd White mm -hmm. and others and I, it starts to challenge me because, well, this guy's saying it happens right now. Well, I, I need to see this. And so I begin to ask God, I, I want to, I want to, I want you to confirm it. I want to see it. Were and, you a skeptic at that point or not? I, I think that I wasn't a skeptic but you as much to as it? I wanted to believe it, but I'd never seen it. So yeah. it's when you're in this place, and, and I think many of your viewers could be there, which is, yeah, exactly. I really believe what I read in the Bible. I believe when I hear of these testimonies, but I've never seen it for myself yeah. firsthand. So I don't know. And I was at that place of, I don't know, but I want to see it. Right. And, and I want to go to you for that right now. You want to see it, you want to know it, I totally get you. But once you see it and you get it, just ask for it. By the way, stay tuned. Ask for more. We'll be right back. TV is all about you getting the needs met that you have. Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life, but Jesus wants to give you the abundant life. How do we do that? We have guests with stories, and God wants to do the stories again in your life. He wants to change your life, He wants to improve your life, and He wants you to have all the benefits. Are you ready for more of God? God is ready for more of Him for you. With me, with me right now is Marshall Belcher, and he is showing you how God got a hold of him, and he wants to do the same for you. So here you are. You're starting to learn, but don't really know how to go about and what to get next. You got slain in the spirit, not knowing what was happening to you. What was it like when you were down there? I just felt this overwhelming peace. Ah. It was the most amazing piece, and it was so refreshing. That was the first way I encountered God like that. Wow. That piece is huge when it hits you. There's nothing like it. There isn't. It was amazing. And there is no wants. There's no exactly. needs at those moments. So how, what did the Lord put in your path next? So from that point on, it was like being on a rocket ship is the best way I can explain it. Uh-huh. Within two months, there was, there was an itinerant minister visiting the church that I was at. And, he and, and this his, is li the little church. Uh, yes, the little church, but by that time had gone from maybe, uh, you know, 15, 20 people to 100 oh, in wow. a couple of months. That's fast growth. The presence of God was just moving yeah. unbelievably. Mm -hmm. And they invited a couple of itinerant ministers up that had been at the Lakeland Revival in Florida. And so I was very excited because I'd seen what was happening in Lakeland. 
and I was really ready to experience, is this God, and what's God going to do? And so in that meeting, I'll never forget, the minister's wife came up, and you could tell that God was really moving on her. I mean, you know, there was just this energy coming off of her, and I couldn't wait to see what happened next. And as she ministered, she called directly to people out in the crowd what condition they had, and Whoa. then would bring them up front. And I was sitting on one of the front rows, and she called uh, fibromyalgia out uh, to a woman that was sitting a couple rows behind me. And the woman came up to receive ministry. And without laying hands on her, the minister just lifted her hands, and she said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And as soon as she dropped her hand like that, I felt a wave of power just come from the front of the room where she was, washed over me into the back. And I'll never forget what happened inside. It, it was like my spirit jumped and I said... the prayer wasn't even for you that The moment, prayer wasn't even for me. But you took it. I took it and at that point I said, this is it. It's real. Wow. And you knew it was real because you have phony balonies out there, you know. Totally. But this was the real deal. This was the real deal. And incidentally, the woman was healed in that moment. All of her pain from head to toe from fibromyalgia went away. Wow. And then... That really set me up for the hunger for that weekend because it was a weekend. And I was really anticipating this impartation prayer service they were going to have where they would pray for the same, you know, Holy Spirit and same grace that rested on them to be imparted go, to us. I'll go, I'll go, you know, yes. good stuff, yeah. I was so ready. And I, that it's, it's a night that really marked me in addition to another night that maybe we'll talk about where I encountered Jesus. But in that time... They came around to pray for us, and I could just remember being so hungry, and God, I just, I, I, w I want to experience you. I want you to touch me, Yeah. and I want this. I want this power to be able to see you come and people be healed just oh, like yeah. I saw the minister do, and so she came around. I'll never forget when she got to me. I, I felt like the presence of this energy before she even came close to me, and I knew it was a presence of God. Wow. And what then, was that like? It, it, it was electrifying, really. Yeah. And it really made me hungry and ready to receive more. So as soon as she put her hand on my shoulder and one hand on my stomach, and the reason why I remember that so well was because as soon as she touched my shoulder and touched my stomach, I felt a bolt of electricity come down her hand and out of her hand in my stomach, and it went up my body oh. and down my body. And literally, electricity just went from head to toe. Wow. And as soon as it hit my knees, I, I couldn't stand anymore. And, you know, I, I went down to the ground. She followed me down to the ground, and she continued what? to pray. And I, and I felt like I was being electrocuted by God. Well, and that's almost getting out of hand now. It was, but I loved every minute of it. <laughs> and uh, it, it made me even hungrier for more. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I stood back up after she made her rounds. Pray for me again. Wow, wow, yeah. I remember when Randy Clark touched the front of my head mm. and said, Holy Spirit, fill her up. And that's the exact prayer I had asked for it right before that moment. I yes. was like, wow. So you don't forget those moments. You never forget those you moments. You just life really changing. don't. So from there on, now life is booming, church is active, everything is falling in place, everything is great. Did it continue that way? It, it did. So, so what happened from that point on was I started to pursue God more, but specifically miracles and healings. Yeah. And I, I saw Todd White uh, in a Power and Love conference, and something he said really encouraged me, even though I'd seen no one healed at that point and saw no miracles at that How point. How many people did you pray for at that point? At that point, I had started praying for people, and, and I'd prayed for maybe, I don't know, 20 or 30 people at that point. Uh-huh. But then I heard his testimony, and really the net of it was he had prayed for over 600 people what? before seeing a single miracle. But that he, is encouraging because so many of us don't yes. see him that way. No. We see him as action every time. You know, yes. 600 people don't give up. Exactly. So that proved to me don't give up and take God at his word and keep pursuing what you see in the word. And so that's what I did. So over the course of the next several months, I decided I'm going to pray for anyone and everyone I see out and about. And so I, I did that for two months. By that point, I'd prayed for a couple hundred people. Wow. 
and not seen anything happen yet. Oh, that's not what I wanted to hear. That's <laughs> not what I'm, but it is the reality. He prayed for 100 people. Todd White prayed for 600 people. Nothing happened yet. Sometimes when there is a delay, we don't count on our own strength, but we have to go up and count on his strength. God never does not answer a prayer, but sometimes he answers differently than we expect. And the end result is so much better. By the way, if you do need prayer, we have a mighty God and we would love to pray for you. So go to our number 855-515-5550 or go to barbtv.org. I just want you to know that God believes so much more in you that he will not leave you where you're at. And would you say this prayer with me right now? This is what I want you to pray for. God, give me a hunger for more of you. Amen. That's all you have to say. If you meant that, say it again. And God is going to show you quite something. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Bar TV. The stories we bring, the problems we show, the solutions we present are real. They are raw and they are authentic. The stories we share are with real people. Are you struggling or do you know someone that has problems? We want you to know that you are not alone. Many can relate. Are you afraid? God wants to give you peace. Do you feel unloved? Know that God loves you. God wants to give you love, peace, joy, and hope. It's all about the real deal. Barb TV wants to share with you its resources, answers, and hope. It is time to not live in a mediocre life, but for you to step into your full potential. God has great plans for you. We have great answers, resources, and hope. BarbTV.org or 855-515-5550. Zero. So you prayed for 100 people, nothing happened. Yes. Did you still want to pray for 101? I did. I, I told God. You did? I, you did I made it. a commitment to him and I said, I'm going to do it until it happens. Although. So that's the key. I believe that's the key, really. Wow. So what happened next? Well, just, just as I was starting to get a little bit tired. Yeah. Right? Discouraged. Just a little bit discouraged. And I'm thinking, well, maybe maybe this is, you know, this is going to take some time. I don't know. But doesn't Randy Clark say, don't talk to me about not people getting healed unless you pray for at least 200 people. Yes. And then come talk. I, I believe that's a key. Okay. Because I'll never forget, we were out on an outreach. So uh, a couple of us decided, well, if we're going to see more miracles, we need, we need to just go out and pray for people. And we're not getting the opportunity you know, in church or some other places. So let's just go out. That's what Jesus had his disciples do. So we, we were out in a, in a, in a city in, in Florida. And I'll never forget, we were in front of a grocery store. And a man was walking up to go get groceries. And I heard God say, he has a back problem. Pray for him. You got a word of knowledge. Yes, but I, I, I didn't know that that's what was going on at the <laughs> moment. But... I got really excited. I thought, well, if I heard this, this guy's going to get healed. Faith was built right there. It was. And so I, I just introduced myself and I said, hey, I'm, I'm out practicing, hearing from God and watching him heal people. Even though I'd never seen anybody healed yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it was accurate. But it was accurate. Right. And so uh, I said, do, do, by chance, do you have any sort of back problem? And he said, yes, I, I do. And I said, can I pray for you? said, yes, I'd love that. And at the same time, I felt like I should grow his legs out. And so, I know. You're going over the top by now. <laughs> okay. I got an impression that one of his legs was shorter than the other. And when uh -huh. I did that, his back would be healed. Uh -huh. And so I just went with what I felt like God was doing. And I had him sit down in a, in a bench that was right at the grocery store. And his, sure enough, one of his legs was about an inch shorter than the other one. Wow. And as I prayed for him... You could see this relief come on his face. Oh, yeah. And then he said, my back's healed. I have no pain. And Did then you make him try it out? I made him bit. try it out. I was like, oh, is this real? You're like and number one or 100 plus. Exactly. Wait, you don't pinch yourself, but you're basically like, Wait Well, at that minute. point, I felt like I was in a movie because then he drags me over to his wife, who is in, her, in the car waiting on him for groceries. And he says, this man just healed me. Get him to pray for your back, too. 
And so he introduced me to his wife. I prayed for his wife. Her back got healed. But then there was more that day. As soon as that happened, I walked back to the front of the store where my friend was. And just then, he had started to talk to a man that pulled up on a motorized scooter. And we asked him, hey, why do you use the scooter? And he said, I just came from the hospital, which the hospital was about one or two blocks from this grocery store. And he said, I, I can't walk because I have a, a cardiovascular disease uh, and a circulatory disease. Wow. And so at that point, I thought, well, hey, this is it. <laughs> and we, we asked if we could pray for him. And he said, no, I don't want what you're selling. And right in that moment, I said, I'm not selling anything, but God wants to touch you. And I said, are you sure we can't pray for you? And he goes, fine. Okay. And so Attitude. imagine that. Dude. <laughs> That's okay. I can blame him. So as we prayed for him, he said, I feel fire going through my veins and touching my heart. Yeah. And then he set the scooter over and started walking around and he said, I'm healed. I'm healed. Wow. And so that was the beginning. The beginning. That was the That's beginning. That's a pretty strong beginning. It was amazing. What happened next? Well, really the, the big next landmark uh, milestone was... There was a revival going on out in Mobile, Alabama, uh, the Bay of the Holy Spirit with Pastor Kilpatrick and Nathan Morris. And at that same time, I'd been praying this prayer. And the prayer was, God, I really honor the, the men and women that you've had pray for me and you've, you've touched me through them. But I just want to encounter you. I just want you to touch me. Wow, that's through his heart. Yeah. And, and I had no idea what to expect from that, but I just knew that was going to be my prayer. And that had been my prayer for a couple of months. And so my family and I took a trip out there uh, to go through a weekend of the revival, starting on a Friday and mm -hmm. then ending on a Sunday. And the, the first night we went, it was the oddest thing, but as we were sitting in the back waiting for things to start, a man came up to us and he said, uh, you know, oh yeah, where are you from? And we told him, and he, he said, yes, yeah, I, I've, I've been there. But it was very weird. It was almost like, Huh. He didn't know many details, and that kind of stuck out to me. It seemed kind of, you know, odd. And then he looked me straight in the eyes, and he said, Have you ever had God just touch you? What a strange... And I felt just chills go over my body. Yeah. And then I turned yeah, to my wife, and I said, Did you hear what he just said? And I was explaining, that, That's that been my prayer. And then I turned around to go tell him that, and he was gone. Was it an angel? I think it was, only because... There was a long distance from, we were in the very back, and to get to the back of the Civic Center, it was a long walk. It was at yeah. least 100 feet. Wow. You should, have, you should have seen him. I should have seen him, but I didn't. Wow. So that really set me up, but nothing really happened that night. I mean, the presence of God was amazing in the Civic, mm -hmm. but then the next night we showed up, and as, as we were finishing up worship... There, there were two areas in the, in the Civic in front of the seats in the front for, for ministry, so there was a lot of space, and in the middle, the same thing. And worship had gone long. It was really wonderful. But then you could tell that the leaders were trying to decide, well, where is God going? And so there was kind of this time that, where That's just funny. You're saying the waiting. data deciding what God's doing, you know, but basically questioning, right? right trying to understand where yeah. is he going. Yeah. And you could sense that. And as that was happening, I felt like God said, go, go stand up there in the middle. And I just felt drawn to go stand in the middle uh, behind the, the row of chairs there. So as I walked to that middle section, there were a couple other people too that were kind of worshiping as, as the keyboardist was still playing and they were waiting to see yeah. where the ministers yeah. took the service. And then I, I hear a voice very loudly in my head say, grab those chairs in front of you. You're going to go down. You got a warning? That was convenient. <laughs> Well, when I heard that, faith rose up in me. It was like, okay. this is the moment God's going to touch me. I'd better grab the chairs. Okay. And literally, as soon as I grabbed the chairs, I felt a lightning bolt come from the Whoa. top of my head and hit me and go all the way down to my feet. As it did that, I fell sideways and hit the concrete. Oh. And, but it didn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I began to feel this, this power flow up and down my body. And as it did, uh, I, I could hear what was going on and, and, you know, what the minister was talking about. Yeah. And 
as I heard that, I heard him say, that's it. And he began to talk about John the Baptist saying, there's one coming who's mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to Jesus. tie. And yeah. he'll baptize you in Holy Spirit and fire. Wow. As he said that, it was like I went into a, a tunnel. Uh, my hearing started to, uh, you know, fade. And it literally sounded like he was getting farther and farther away. And to the point where almost I couldn't hear him. And as that happened, I met Jesus face to face. At that wow. point, I was in a wow. I was in an open vision. I saw Jesus with these eyes of fire, yeah, uh, and and his overwhelming love welcoming me into this encounter. What did that do to you? We have like a minute left. So, what did that do to you? Well, it it was a life changing encounter in the sense that, you know, he showed me all these all these fields in heaven that were yet to be planted. <sighs> with gardens which represented souls that had come into the kingdom their place in heaven and he said will you will you plant these fields these gardens with me and of course wow. i said yes oh yeah and as i came out of that encounter because at that point they were doing ministry and it just became overwhelming the power of god that was on me the power of god on the ministers i kind of came out of the encounter surprised so nice. but after that point it has marked me to the to the place where I'll 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 never forget what God's called me to ask me to do. Yeah. So and what is it that you do today? What is your website if people want to get a hold of you? So my wife and I have moved to the Bay Area in California uh -huh. uh, to begin a revival movement, which is really focused around uh, refreshing. And the website? What is the website? The website is yeah. revivalhop. Revival. Dot com. Wow. God has done so much in you and he wants to do so much more. Thank you for coming yes. to the show. God is not done at all. He is right there working on you. You think that what, ha what, what happened to Marshall is impossible for you. Just make yourself available and see what God can do. God loves you and so do I. Have a great day. Are you feeling always treated fairly or are there situations that should not exist in America today? What would you do if the FBI picked you up? What would you do if you would be falsely accused while you're trying to report a crime? Well, I know I haven't done anything wrong. I know that I'm innocent. And he said, well, we need your help. And I said, okay, I'm willing to give you my help, but I'm not willing to testify against myself. Yeah, was there a warrant for them to break in like that? No. Nothing? No. How threatening. No. Did they take you? Oh, yeah.